Now that you've disassembled your firearm with care not to damage the screws, ornate engraving, or any lettering or numbering that may be stamped into the parts, what now? Rule number one, take your time. Always take your time. Focus on the fine details. Don't hurry. Plan enough time to finish all the steps. First, check for the direction of the polish lines in the factory finish. Turn the piece under a light until the lines show up. If you can't see any polish lines, guess at the easiest direction that the factory could polish the piece. You will want to have your finish polish in this direction. Make sure your firearm is held firmly in a vise. When working on a set of barrels, I like to clamp them in soft jaws in a vise. Usually we'll use a set of wooden felt jaws. You need to clamp the barrel firmly, but not so tightly that you'll crush it. You have to be careful with all types of barrels, but shotgun barrels are usually thinner than most, so it's very important not to crush them in the vise. Back sandpaper with flat wooden block or dowel. A lot of times it's better to use a wooden block than a file when you're sanding flat surfaces. This will avoid any chance of slipping off with the file and damaging your part. Go ahead and wrap the paper around the wooden block, making sure that your block has a good flat surface. And when you're working on a curved surface like a barrel, you want to work lengthwise to avoid getting ripples in it. And you're also going to turn the block as you work around the barrel. This will avoid getting a flat spot in one area. A dowel comes in real handy to, for doing any kind of concave surfaces. Generally, I use about a 120 grit to remove the old bluing. When sanding, you also want to be careful of any surfaces like the rib or barrel lugs to avoid rounding them off. Remove the old finish with 120 grit or bluing remover. Right now I'm going to be using a uh, Birchwood Casey blue remover. Make sure you're always wearing some kind of rubber gloves or hand protection when you're using any kind of solvent or acid. You need to apply this fairly liberally to the part and then let it set a couple minutes. Now that we've let it set, I'm going to use a damp steel wool and go ahead and scrub this down and as you can see, the bluing will come right off. After the bluing is pretty well removed, you need to rinse it with water, and then go ahead and wipe it dry. You want to make sure and get the bluing remover off of all the pieces of the part, otherwise it may continue to etch. File only when you have to. Generally, it's better to avoid filing if possible, but if you have deep pitting or nicks, it may become necessary. Clean your file after every few strokes with a file card. It's real important to use a file card frequently when you're working to remove all the chips and all the burrs out of the file. A burr stuck in the file can gouge the surface. Remember, taking your time now can save you a lot of time later. How you polish depends largely on what type of barrel you're polishing. The three basic types are double, octagon and round. When working on an octagon barrel, be sure that your file is flush with the flat of the barrel. This will keep your edges sharp and straight. When filing a rounded surfaces such as this barrel, you want to make sure that you use a sweeping motion that follows the curve of the barrel. I'm going to keep the file in length with the barrel to make sure that I don't get a dip. If you use it this way, you have a tendency to get hollows. We have a round barrel here, and I'm going to use about a 120 grit paper in a whipsaw motion, kind of like shining a shoe. And I'm just going to use that to go ahead and take the bluing off of the barrel. Making sure that you move the angle of your paper quite a bit to avoid getting any, getting any flat spots. Dowels of different sizes are real handy when working on concave surfaces. You can wrap the paper around them. It'll help you get a nice even finish without ripples. Once all the old finish is removed and all the pits and dings have been sanded or filed out to 120 grit, you're ready to begin initial polishing. Before you begin, know how far you have to polish. Don't go beyond the necessary grit. If you aren't sure, polish a piece of scrap metal until the grit and polish match. 
Write this down in a notebook with a description of the part, polishing direction, and finish. You may be able to find original grit and polished direction lines under protected areas on the barrel or under grips. Use these as a reference point for final polish and direction. A general guide to polishing grit is doubles. Over, under, and octagon barrels will be polished to 180 grit with the lines going lengthwise. Round barrels can be polished in either direction, so always check for the original polish lines. Sand completely with the lowest grade, then switch to the next finer grade. Angle your stroke slightly with each grade to get deeper grit and remove stroke marks from previous grades. It's always a good idea to change the direction of your angle a little bit. This will allow you to see when all the previous grit lines are gone. You still have to make sure that you keep flush with the surface that you're working on though, otherwise you might roll the edges. Be sure to use all the grits in sequence. Be picky about removing all the previous grit lines. And also, be sure to use all your grits in sequence from coarsest to finest. Remember, the polishing marks are going to show up more after the new finish is applied. After you've finished with your polishing, it's a good idea to check the barrel in a couple different angles of light to make sure that you don't have any cross grit or if you have any lines that are going the wrong angle. You can also tell if the lines are going in the correct direction for a factory finish. A general guide to polishing receivers is lever actions are polished to 600 grit. Earlier series are bright and the later series more matte. Levers and other parts will be polished to 240 or 320 grit. Receivers of some doubles will have a high luster while others will be more matte in appearance. It's always best to look at original examples of firearms like yours or books before beginning. Preparing the action parts of your firearm can be tricky. There are a few rules and cautions that should be followed. You want to make sure that you do all the curved surfaces first. For example, if you were doing this action here, you want to make sure that you did these curved surfaces before doing the flats. This will enable you to get a nice sharp edge. It's critical to be aware of any bearing surfaces when you're polishing the actions. For example, the top of this bolt where it bears against the inside of the action, this area here where it's going to bear against the stock, or the inside of this shotgun action where the breech will bear against the barrels. If you polish any of these surfaces, no matter how tempting it may be, you can actually make your gun unsafe. Another common bearing surface that people polish when they shouldn't is a surface where the barrel meets the breech on the action right here. Under no circumstances should you file, sand, or polish the sear area of any firearm. Doing so will render the firearm unsafe. Another important thing to be aware of when you're polishing is to make sure that all your fitted parts are connected before you start. For example, you want this lock plate to be flush and in place. That'll allow you to get a nice smooth surface on here and not end up with rolled edges in between them. You have fitting parts, it's important to polish them together. For example, on this action, the lower tang in the action. So when we polish with our dowel and sandpaper here, make sure we get a nice smooth surface and the edges between the two parts will stay even. Always polish towards the flat surface. When polishing a curved surface, there's a couple things you want to be careful of and make sure you do. You want to make sure that you polish towards the flat edge, not away from it. This will enable you to keep the edge parallel and sharp. Cover the entire opening when polishing screw holes. Here's an example of a properly polished tang. The screw holes are nice and round. To ensure that they stay that way when you're polishing, make sure that you cover the entire screw hole. If you polish it just halfway, you'll tend to make them oblong. For some of the curved inside surfaces, I'll use a, a round wooden dowel it makes it a little easier to get into some, uh, some areas. Just remember to keep changing the angle. You just take a thin piece of paper, wrap it around, and pretty much the same method you use for like a shoe shine. Polish the flat surfaces last to get clean, sharp edges. Remember, only the final polish needs to go in the factory direction. Once your rounded surfaces are all polished, it's time to do the flats. Doing the flats last will give you nice, clean, sharp edges. 
To do this, I'm going to use a large wooden block that I've flattened the sides on. 120 grit sandpaper, wrap it around my wooden block, and then start to polish, making sure that I keep this flat on the part. This will prevent any tilted edges. 180. I'm using a different direction. After getting all the 120 lines out with 180, I'm going to put 240 grit on my block and go back in another direction to make sure that I can get all my 180 lines out. You'll continue this process all the way up through the desired finished grit. Here's an example of a well polished action. The edges are nice and crisp, the round surfaces are round, the flat surfaces are flat, and all the grit lines are going in the correct direction. You finished polishing the pits, dings, dents, and gouges out of the last piece of your firearm. You've checked the surfaces under good lighting and at various angles and are satisfied with the results. Congratulations, you're ready to apply the final polish. It doesn't matter in which direction you begin polishing as long as you finish in the direction of the original factory polish. Add semichrome polish to 4 aught steel wool for a bright finishing polish. This is better than dry polishing. It doesn't matter what direction you buff this in, as long as your final polish goes in the same direction of your final grit lines. You can achieve the same effect as buffing with less wear on the part. This will give us a good mirror bright finish without any danger to the screw holes or the edges. Another way to apply the final polish to your firearm is with a wire brushing wheel. Be sure to wear eye protection when operating any motorized tool. Most hardware store wire wheels are too coarse. We suggest you use a two and a half thousandths wire brushing wheel available from Brownells. For parts you want a matte finish on, apply a light coat of oil to the part before polishing. An oiled wheel polishes to a matte finish. Any errors you've made before this step will become more noticeable now. As a general rule, we advise against polishing brass parts or brass guns. The reason for this is that the patina or the color of the brass when it's aged is extremely important to the value of the gun. And as soon as you start to polish on it, you're going to lose that. There are several different types of finish that can be used in restoring your firearm. Rust blue, niter blue, charcoal blue, and case color. How yours is finished depends on what style was originally used at the factory when the firearm was built. 